year now. Sammy Watkins is emerging as one of the the top forces at receiver in this game, and I think you'll see more of the above tonight. And I, I got to tell you, when you take away Julian Edelman and Deion yeah. Lewis, who did not, uh, you know, they, they played and they mm -hmm. played very well at Buffalo. Mm -hmm. It's it's just huge losses for an offense that's going to have a hard time against Rex's defense. It'll take every bit of Tom Brady's greatness to get to 31. I mean, you, most people would say, well, you can get to four. Nope. Th I'll give him 31, and I'm paying tribute to Tom Brady to get to 31. But I, I think their defense is going to struggle to stop Tyrod, LaShawn, and Sammy Watkins. Skip Bayless, I'm going to go with the Patriots winning this game 34-22. to 22. Okay. Um, I think it'll be tight, and they'll pull away. I think there's a couple of things that you need to take into consideration here. Weather conditions is going to be under 40. Uh, usually in those weather conditions, Tom Brady's like 34 and 5. I, I remember Shady McCoy, my man. I've known him for years. Um, I, obviously, he's an, uh, an elite running back as, far as, I, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned in cold weather conditions. I'm not sure, not so much. Didn't look up that stat, but in cold weather conditions, he just seems somebody that really, really excels in more uh, decent weather as opposed to inclement weather. I think that could be a factor. I think you have to take into consideration the fact that he's run for exactly 112 yards over the last two games. He's never had three consecutive 100-yard mm -hmm. games in his career. I got to look at that. I also have to look at it from this perspective, Skip. Um, we year losing Julian Edelman, that's a tough loss, but nobody's getting rid of the football quicker than Tom Brady. The Bills had like 14 sacks. They ranked 29th in the NFL in sacks. Last year, they had 54. The year before, they had 57. They only have 14 sacks on the season. Uh, Rex Ryan talked about Kyle Williams probably going to be out for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, you combine all of that. Are you going to get to the quarterback? Are you going to be able to rattle Tom Brady in Foxborough? I don't think you're going to do that. I think you'll come out ready to fight. I think you'll move the football. I love what I'm seeing from Tyrod Taylor. He's completed over 70% of his passes. He's thrown 11 touchdowns, just four interceptions on the year. He's a game. He's a, he's a game changer as far as I'm concerned. I think him with Shady McCoy, with a guy like Sandy, you know, with a guy like Sammy Watkins, mm -hmm. with Charles Clay, with yeah. their leading receiver thus far this year. I definitely think that the Bills are in a position where, you know, you were right in terms of looking at them as your wild card because they're clearly more formidable. I still haven't given up on the Jets, yeah. but I think the Bills are definitely going to be in the mix because I think they've got talent at a multitude of positions. And I think this is the most complete team that Rex Ryan has ever had. But I think when you, your style of play, what you're not doing well this year is going to play right into Brady and the New England Patriots hands. You're not getting sacks. Tom Brady gets rid of the football yep. very, very quickly. No, you don't have Deion Lewis, but LeGarrette Blunt can play. Yeah. No, you don't have Julian Edelman, but Tan Danny Amendola can play. There's still LaFell. There's still Gronkowski and these boys. And I just think that they can do some things for you in Foxborough. Knowing Rex Ryan is coming, I think they'll be ready. I think it'll be tight, but I think ultimately they'll get the Bills figured out and they will pull away late. They'll, it'll be a tight game. They may even have a lead, and then New England is going to pull away, mm -hmm. you know, after the eight-minute mark in the fourth quarter, and I think they're going to win this by about 34 to 22. I sure hope you are right about this, but I remind you, which coach has tormented Tom Brady the most? Yeah. Even in Foxborough, yeah. Rex has. Mm -hmm. I, I thought he would torment him at, at Buffalo in Orchard Week Park. Two, yeah. yeah, I really did, uh, although I picked obviously New England to win the game, but I thought that would be close. And it got close. It got scary close at the end because Rex is right about one thing about his team. It does not give up. The quarterback, when he's been healthy, has been really good, and they've been really good. So I, I think it'll go to the wire, but I hope you're right about that. I would love to see New England pull away. Yep. So you're both, both expecting a close one, but a one-point game. That surprises me, Skip. We shall see. Well, they're going to be that close to me. It, it was one point at the Giants, right? Yep, yep. And now, for Geico's edition of Stuff Found in Your Car, we go inside your side door pocket. Hello, yes, the crumpled receipt with gum in it. From your anniversary dinner, you sprang for expensive wine, your server was Beth. That dinner was a couple hundred dollars. Money you could get back if you switched to Geico and saved hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. I bet you'd save that receipt. Frame it, even. But really, where did I go wrong? Was it the corkage fee? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com today. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in uh, the play calling. I'm disappointed in the situations we were put in. And uh, I wish it all played out differently. Uh, how we lost, I feel like we just weren't putting 
the, the right opportunity to win this game. We weren't put in the right situations to win this game. And, and like, I don't think Michigan State was better than us. We, they weren't. But uh, we didn't execute. I mean, honestly, I can't speak for the for the play calling. I don't know what was going on. I don't know what they were seeing. Clearly an emotional loss to Michigan State was Ohio State's first loss in 24 games and apparently running back Ezekiel Elliott, as we just heard, that was also supposedly his final home game. Elliott calling out the coaches. Skip, uh, what should Urban Meyer do now? Before I answer that, Molly, Stephen A., I have a whole lot of sympathy for Ezekiel Elliott and what happened to him on Saturday. He was crushed, emotionally yeah. devastated, because I thought this was potentially his Heisman moment, his Heisman opportunity on a pretty national stage to, to throw up a big number, maybe go for 150, 200 yards rushing and say, I'm right there with Derrick Henry. I'm right in the, in the race to the wire. Average 142 yards rushing coming into that game. Yep. And as you know, after that opening touchdown drive, it wasn't opening the game, but the early in the second quarter, 7 nothing touchdown drive, Ezekiel Elliott carried the ball four times for six more yards. And he went up with 12 carries for 32, 33, 33 yards. 33, yeah. 33. And they wound up with 132 yards of total offense and five first downs at home against an, a, a rival, if not the, the arch rival. Mm -hmm. So you're devastated. You, 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 you don't think, you blurt. And yet what he blurted, the reason I have so much sympathy was everything he said, I agreed with. I do pin this on Urban Meyer. I thought he was awful calling plays. He's got co-coordinators. I don't know how much of their input they have. Remember, Tom Herman left from last yep. year when he was on fire at the Houston, end of the year. Right? Went to Houston. Right. And congratulations because your UConn Huskies oh, upset yeah. Houston over the weekend. I thought that was going to be the A block. You know, but there you, you know, go. I know. Cowboys, I was thinking I about that. It's so yeah. touched. It means yeah. so much. It go does ahead. mean so much. It was a, that was a big win, actually. It, it was. was a congratulations. Huge win. It was a huge We're bowl win. eligible. Yeah. Okay, so now back to Zeke. So the, the point is, they're a mess on offense, thanks to the head coach. And they're a bigger mess in the bigger picture because you don't play the musical quarterback game. I'm sorry, I said during the offseason, it's Cardale Jones. Go with him and stick with him. He had a rocky start to the year. He threw some picks. We know about all that. He would have won this game, I believe. Cardale wins this game when JT couldn't win the game because they couldn't run a lick after a while on that Michigan State front that was just fierce and rock solid. And after a while, you just got to loosen it up. I know it was windy, I know it was rainy, but you got to fling the football the way Cardell was flinging it at the end of the year last year. So I, that, that's all on Urban Meyer's doorstep. Now, conclusion, answer to question. Okay. I'm sorry, if you're Urban Meyer, you have to defend your authority here you got to sit Zeke down. You, you can't play him against Michigan. I'm sorry, you can't have that kind of insubordination. You can't allow one of your stars to attack you, to, to shred your credibility to the media in, in ways that we don't see often anywhere in college football, especially in Urban Meyer's program. So this is just me. If I'm Urban Meyer, I have to take a stand here. I have to pull this young man aside. He's already effectively quit anyway and say, I, I just can't play you against Michigan because I have to show I'm still in charge here. Understand what you said, even though I think the public at large, Buckeye Nation at large, would agree mostly with the sentiments that he expressed. I still think Urban has to take a stand, and I guess he's going to speak here in just a few minutes, so we'll see how yeah. he responds. just want to make sure I, I'm clear on your position. You're saying bench him for one game. Yep, for Michigan. Not bench him for the Big Ten championship game if it gets or there. bowl game. If yeah. it gets there or bowl game. Yeah. You're not saying that, are you? I, I'm not sure it's going to get there, but go ahead. Right, but yeah. I'm saying they can make a bowl. They'll make no, a bowl. not yeah. for the bowl game. Right if he bowl. wants to play, that would right. be his last game at Ohio right. State. Right, according right, to right, 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 right. Um, if you're just talking one game, I have mm -hmm. no problem with okay. it. Okay. I have no problem with it. I think that he deserves to be benched for one game. I feel bad from this perspective. Every word he said was absolutely mm -hmm. right. 
Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott was absolutely right. Irvin Meyer even admitted, not that he was right because he didn't know what Ezekiel Elliott said at the time, but he said that he was entirely too conservative. He did a horrendous job of play calling. When you consider the 132 total yards, it was the worst in Urban Meyer's professional career. Mm -hmm. It was his worst performance, you know, calling yeah. plays. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get that. Um, if you're Ezekiel Elliott, here's where the problem really, really lies. And it's a lot of folks out there that need to hear this. Turn that video off, please. Here's <laughs> the deal, okay? This is what needs to be said. Yep. Ezekiel Elliott, let's reiterate, was absolutely right. Urban Meyer, this was his first loss in the Big Ten in years, okay? The man has been pretty close to flawless. He's won multiple national titles, okay? He has the cachet. There are moments in Ezekiel mm -hmm. Elliott's career, although he's been relatively stellar, has never averaged less than six yards a carry. He's got 1,400 yards, but he does have 40 less carries this year. He does have almost 400 less yards this year rushing than he did last year. So you have to take into account the fact that all of those things probably are affecting him, particularly sure. when a national championship is on the got line it. and you think you may have just blown it, but you don't throw your coach under the bus. Can't. You can't, you can't do that. Do you, you can't do that. You can't get away with it. The reason why I say to you I want it to be just a game, but I don't think it should be more than that, because let's, let's understand something. It's perfectly within Urban Meyer's right to sit there and say, yep. since you said you're leaving yep. and you've already just quit on me, bye. Mm -hmm. I mean, Urban Meyer could actually do that and get away with it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want him to do that because this kid has been too good for this program, too good of an athlete, too good of a person to just throw his future away because he got emotional after a devastating loss. He doesn't deserve that, okay? But at the same time, you can't have a kid going out there and being insubordinate against your coach, a.k.a. boss, mm -hmm. all right, yeah. and, 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 and operate with impunity. There's no kind of punishment yeah. whatsoever. You can't let that slide because that's going to open the floodgates for others to think that they can get away with it too and yep. that's not the real world not in the, the real, real world. world if you call out your boss publicly yeah. there's usually a price mm -hmm. that you pay it is not something it yes. is not something that you do it is ramifications <laughs> and ezekiel elliott cannot be immune from and, all and of i that. must say that we, can't we, happen we just showed his tweet of was it last night i guess right i'm not sure yeah what, not whatever sure when he last night I got to tell you, I didn't love the tweet. And if yeah. I'm Urban Meyer, I don't love it either because it's not a laughing matter what yeah. he did. But I don't think it was laughing. I think that what he, he I think it's actually a little worse than that. He wasn't laughing it off. He's sitting there like, I guess I'm the bad guy. In other words, y'all got it wrong. I don't. He's not. He, he's looking at the veracity of his statement yeah. as opposed to how inappropriate it is to call out your boss, who is one of the most respected bosses mm -hmm. in all of college right. football. You can't get away with doing that. I what I would say about Urban Meyer. Don't hit that. You're not helping yourself, buddy. But the other buddy. part is, is that you look at him and you look at Cardell Jones. And Urban Meyer has to be careful because it gives the impression that there are more, there's more than one person, yep. more than Ezekiel Elliott, that's not happy with the program. As yep. opposed to guys that say, all right, I'm a stud. I'm going to go to the NFL and make money. They seem to be given the impression, just get me the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. And so you don't want that mm -hmm. as a coach if you're Urban Meyer. Yep. And that's something that somebody needs to ask him to address with his press I, conference I, I today. I would have advised the young man to stay off Twitter. But I suppose if, if he felt strongly enough, if he had tweeted... I stand behind what I said in the locker room, but I regret saying it. That, that, that might suffice. That might be enough to placate his boss. All he could have said was, boss or no boss, I respect Coach Urban yep. Meyer. He said, but damn, look at what I've done. How could mm -hmm. you give me 12 carries? Like, even though that might have been bad, mm -hmm. yep. you can understand it. Sure. He just went yeah. a little bit further in terms of the play calling. And what Ezekiel Elliott has to pay attention to, which is the point I really wanted to make, is that you know this better than me. This is the kind of stuff that will hurt you come NFL draft time. It can. With his ability, I agree. they'll still look at him and say, oh, you going to throw us under the bus too if you come mm -hmm. here? You got coaches. You think about the NFL scouting combine and what they put these guys through with the questions yep. that they ask sure. them. I hope it doesn't hurt this kid. He's a good kid. He's been performing. By the way, he elite guy. Play. 
He oh, can really, he really play. I would want him on my NFL I, team. So would I. The Texans have won three games in a row for the first time since 2012. And on top of that, they pulled it off last night against the Jets with T.J. Yates, who threw for 229 yards in his first start since January of 2012. The Jets have quickly moved outside of the playoff picture, losing four of their last five games and dropping to third place in the AFC East at 5-5. Five and five. Stephen A., are they done? I would say they're done, but they're in trouble. I mean, they've got Miami, the Giants, uh, Dallas, New England, and Buffalo coming up at 5.